around you, you talk about feathers. Yeah. You know, we're not expecting that we're gonna run around and and yeah. uh, talk about who's, who's gonna have the feathers now, like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but actually, take that as inspiration. Like, what what yeah. grain of truth do we see in that that still reflects today? Yeah. And if we can see that reflect, number one, the job I have to do is number one, really be open to that new model, you know, aspect. And, and ask curious questions, but then reflect for myself. Do I see anything that is of use or that is a pattern that I see today as well, like mm -hmm. a timeless pattern? And then also what, what resonates in me? Like Durgadas used to say, what is alive in you? <laughs> and what I've learned through this past year with all of you uh, or all of the people in, in Omega, Ah, uh, especially this this ancient wisdom or the systemic, you know, system, whole systems thinking. I have to add those models, those mental models, uh, really speak to something. If you reflect on them, you feel that aliveness again. Like as a human being, actually, <laughs> you know, you have that naturally. But I can attest also that our, um, you know, career-driven, uh, power, status, money, uh, focused systems have successfully uh, deadened what's alive in a human. Very, very successfully. <laughs> and it is very easy what to do in that system. We just go for maximizing uh, profit, maximizing status. And you know, that, that thinking, if that remains intact, we can come up with the best technology, token model. We're gonna end up with the same shit. <laughs> Uh, uh, more efficiently, yeah. that we said, like those token systems, they're gonna make this globally effective. Like Facebook is a joke compared to what is possible with token engineering if that really goes south or down or whatever. You know? <sighs> Someone already has reflected that reflected on the knowledge shared it and they're like okay i actually don't find it valuable but it keeps getting brought up like over and over it's the only way what do you like and way. that's the thing that's the thing like then you need agency then. like what what are you bored of communicate you have to you have to exchange with an omega like you know, that, that's the one contribution, question, ask critical question, direct them to the person who you think can answer. Or if you want this question from the group, direct them to the group. But like saying, I'm bored, I want this to be something else. Uh, okay, <laughs> but that's not going to help uh, or that's not going to improve. And, and, and you know, like concretely what is it what is it that that and then also there's there might be so many things that you don't know where to start right then focus what is most important to you now and then at the end what i see though is and that's that's the curation part i guess and our synthesizing part and that's where we all can improve our contribution that we need to contextualize everything within token engineering because we are <laughs> in token engineering commons, right? I could be participating, and I am participating in more than just one DAO uh, or in various levels, right? Uh, so I am responsible for honoring that context that my contribution, you know, uh, actually is contextualized. It can energize me, it can, you know, uh, uh, it, it is what I want to do. And again, in Omega, you have that space. Please, if it energizes you, just share. Uh, as long as it has the philosophy and I think it's the right group, right? And we don't know what might emerge from, from that, what energizes you. But at the same time, 
you need to focus on why did we get together in the first place, right? <clears throat> and you're not, we don't want to change <laughs> the, the world. If you're in Token Engineering Commons, you're participating and you want to provide the public, provide contributions to public goods. And the Token Engineering Commons has many working groups, so number one. Then Token Engineering community has an academy that needs support, right? So like there are so many valuable contributions anyone could be doing. If you choose Token Engineering Commons Omega, literally I hope you have a calling <laughs> into the space because it's not, it's literally, there is no onboarding or onboard myself to myself knowledge. Like we can, all we can provide for sure guaranteed is the space where you can, where you have space for self inquiry and self knowledge. Because I think we all agree that without that, ethics, well, well, even questions about ethics don't even arise. Like if you don't know yourself, or if you're not interested in that, or if you don't see its value uh, as a contributor, I think that that's the that's the that, that's the one thing. Like, what is your onboarding question? It's what question do you come to Omega? If you're like, I don't have a question. <clears throat> I'm just generally confused, or I don't know. Like, there there is this current energy and this. Oh, I'm drained and. Well, we could hang around and, and talk about how horribly complex life is. <laughs> but again, like complexity tolerance, we need to find, you know, every time you feel like that, number one, ask for space. Take that space. That's the whole Satori started with is about seasons and so on. You know, there is a time, time for is sowing seeds, there's a time for growing, there's a time for harvesting, and there's a time for regeneration. I think like, again, why we're into this regenerative workflows is we want to figure out those, those seasons. And I think those are important. Like we can't be growing. <laughs> and the people who might be able to give questions don't even have the time to get get there because there are all these questions about what is omega <laughs> that we don't even get to work on working group omega stuff that we know we agreed upon and so on and we want to so that that's my current um yeah that, that's the current issue that i see and i also want to you know don't just say i see an issue but uh, the definition of process flows will definitely improve, so that's why we're here today. And again, Satori and everyone from the Creative Jam work stream, or I don't know how we call it, thread, are, are hosting us because why? We don't want, like, there are multiple people here who know how to run a project or companies, operations. We know how to do it business as usual. But we are here within this creative flow that we want to get insights or harvest a bit of this whole discussion that has been happening in Creative Jam for, for weeks. That we harvest some of that insight and uh, think about where we can um, incorporate those in the, in the process flow. So before we get into that, um, just quickly, there is this whole administrative stuff that needs to be doing that Matt has been uh, thankfully uh, taking on as and, and that has a role, working group lead, in, uh, thankfully uh, taking on as and, and that has a role, working group lead. And I have been taking on uh, the role of steward. Again, that has a definition within token engineering commons. Like this is how tech organizes itself. If you're new to it, you have to go through the onboarding in token engineering commons. 
in communitas, asking questions there, reading through the token engineering comments handbook, pointing towards things that need improvement, etc. Uh, and our job within Token Engineering Commons Omega is to, again, write our contextualized version of this processes that are encoded in, in, in uh, social agreements, uh, social norms, into the tools that we're using in tech, as well as uh, smart contracts. So we need in this administrative flow, uh, what are the minimal roles to function within tech? Uh, how are we, um, yeah, how are we in those roles? What have we done? And so on, like, what is this process? And then secondly, or, or then I would like to go to the, to the, to the part where we want to harvest a bit of this creative flow where we have uh, some insights or, or aspirations to continue research and regenerative workflows. Like, how can we work in this space within Token Engineering Commons, within the Omega Working Group, with what it is that we want to figure out as a working group and what is it that through those actions that we provide that energize us, but at the same time are contextualized in uh, token engineering commons and Omega. What is it uh, that those actions can provide? And as soon as we ask for funding and get those funding, again, we're taking from the commons pool of this common and we take this because we say we are the people, by doing these actions, we believe that we will be able to provide back to the commons, to add value to the commons. And we did this once. We went through the process, the token engineering consilience library, and that's where we have those contributions, etc. And we know when we uh, provide that, it will be a public good in token engineering commons that would help a lot uh, with this initial uh, or, or with any onboarding type of questions and so on what is token engineering commons what is token engineering in general and so on and so forth but then again the the level is going back how do we want to do this is by some things that we have already noted in the omega manifesto like that we value actions over, over outcomes <laughs> and that we want to find a new way of working. We call it regenerative workflows. A new way of working that actually really works in the spaces where there is loose collaboration, extreme asynchronicity. <laughs> Mm -hmm. right uh, of communication it's really rare that we have these times uh, where people are all on board how can we make most of the this time how can we provide in the space without creating hierarchies and factory uh, type work style so this more or less setting intention and yeah, the, the, the main questions. So, Matt, shall we start with, with what is like the process of participating of um, administrative actions that need to be taken? And, and just share with the group, I'm taking notes, uh, but just let's just share with the group and, and get some questions there. So, so you mean the notion page that we were like writing, Nick and you had wrote something. Yeah, like that we had uh, mm -hmm. that that we had started. But maybe you can just uh, recap the uh, the main points uh, and and maybe things that aren't on there, for example. Yeah, sure. Okay, like participating so in Stuart's calls and so on. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so as a working group coordination lead, my main priority is that I need to keep Omega relevant into general picture of the TC and participate the Scrum creation. So basically, mm -hmm. I need to go to steward call and update what's going on. If there's a potential collaboration between working group, I need to raise it. And also, if if I have a like blocker, I have to raise it. For example, mm -hmm. like we were talking about a new web developer, maybe we will need. So I ask Stuart, mm -hmm. where can I find it? Who will be the one that I should reach in our mm -hmm. community? So these kind mm -hmm. of scrum participation is done, and I have to do it. So one point of this is the be aware of what's going on in each. Mm -hmm subgroups within the Omega. So regarding mm -hmm. the discussion that is uh, going on with you guys, like I was reading the chat. So I see uh, there's like kind of the structure of Omega is kind of a chaotic. Sometimes you can feel the classic problem of tyranny of structurelessness. But we, we have like trying to solve these issues by creating this thread and working on new budgeting style and workflow styles. So I'm not like super, like, like I'm not pessimistic about it. Just, I, 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 I just want to share that I understand the feeling and I understand that the concern and I will try to do my best to solve these issues as much as I can as like one of the role of mine, I feel like. Mm -hmm. The second role I was, going to mention is things related to funding and proposal writing. So as a working group coordination lead, it's kind of, we haven't decided uh, directly yet, but it's created, it's emerged as ad hoc role. So I'm taking care of funds regarding like uh, uploading proposal to the garden, uh, mm -hmm. managing notice safe, of course, I'm not managing by myself the funds, but I mean, mm -hmm. like, for example, mm -hmm. sharing news regarding our funding. So, for example, uh, Shemna wants to, wants to funnel her uh, stewardship compensation to me. So I'm executing this kind of transaction and trying to make those as clear, as, as transparent as possible. So that's one of the things that is capturing the administrative work. And the last thing I... I come up to my mind is community calls. Basically, it's part of the Scrum participation, but more for community peeps rather than stewards. So basically, going mm -hmm. to community call and updating what's going on in Omega. And if somebody wanted to come to initiative, they should they will mm -hmm. be aware of what's going on in our workspace. These are the things I have in my mouth. I'm checking I was right. Yeah. So, and, and something else that is going to come is now that we have also the funds for Token Engine Conscience Library and people have contributed to it. So if you look at the process flow of Token Engine Conscience Library, you see finished activity with actions within that led to the funding. And then from that, the current activities with people providing action. So number one, we need we are going to decide uh, how do we share those funds with current contributors uh, the collective uh, you know uh, and and test dynamic energy budget like how are we accounting for energy energy flows and there also like this question coming up is it sustainable to keep onboarding people or do we have people that are already contributing and that's enough or uh, do we need to actually onboard people with skills we know we are missing <laughs> right what you just uh, just mentioned so ron uh, and satori maybe like the, those of you who have looked into dynamic energy budget more and i hadn't time to to uh, catch up with you uh, all but I know that you had looked into this excess energy. Like, do you have any insights that we could be already uh, using, looking into? Or shall we start with a simple distribution uh, uh, distribution case study, if you will, where 
we can look at it. How are we uh, sharing energies in, in contributions? How are we handling this dynamic energy budget of the Consilience Library, which isn't just the funds that we got in. That, those are definite, like, some energy <laughs> that, that comes in that also changes the energy of the group, in my view. But, like, the contributors' energies that come in are the contributors actually contributing things that they say, they energize, that energizes them. Like, all of these things we could be researching alongside working and delivering the Token Engine Conscience Library. So, any thoughts on, on that, Satori, Sean? Um, I don't know if it's an answer, but my understanding is that our proposal to, to uh, think about energy as excess without having to um, dilapidate it through wars and <laughs> you know, it's, it's a disruption in a human way of thinking of society i mean from what i understand and i found uh, today another author also from the beginning of the 20th century that is talking i mean like walls you know like i mean anyway i will show you the references but it's a very mm -hmm. we are on a very strong uh, topic i mean you can see mm -hmm. that there's a lot of people that wrote about it but so anyway so my, mm -hmm. what i wanted to say and i don't know nick also she she she, she and, and satori what you think but uh, it's really a disrupt disruption to uh, uh we, we propose a different myth compared to what have been uh, thought and experienced today. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. really... Um... Mm -hmm. Okay, Any, I, I don't want to... So mm -hmm. it's a different myth to Thank believe you. what does it mean to be, to consider energy as excess and not having to use energy as a way to uh, uh, be, uh, to assume your power or on somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just something that resonates, uh, I see flow as balance of energy. There is no excess of energy, there is just no resistance, <laughs> there is just flow. So that, that just came to mind. Uh, in yeah, that. and so to me, what I, so I'm just going with this idea that could be maybe inspiring for, for the um, mm -hmm. library. I really see the idea of the, 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 the number of time that a flow is connecting, you know, is interacting. So if you mm -hmm. imagine a kind of circular economy, so you never lose energy because there's mm -hmm. always gain and, and, and spend in the mm -hmm. same time. And the more mm -hmm. you have some contact points, the more you increase the, the value because it means mm -hmm. that the energy has been um, used in a very important number of time. Th this is why I really want to mm -hmm. explore uh, the relational philosophy. So mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you imagine mm -hmm. of, um, uh, you know, like, like if it's only people that interact, <laughs> so the, num the more you have interaction of maybe a, a similar ID or value flow or type of action, the more it has, it produces some value. Yeah. So. It does. Yeah. Like that, what, what's like, if you can multiply or that's a typical multiplier effect. The other thing I, I, I see <clears throat> contact points, um, energy does never get consumed up or anything. Energy always is only transformed. So it's basically the, the the velocity of energy transformation from one state to the to the next. Uh, does anyone else want to share their insights from past interactions and dynamic energy budget well, uh, thread? Yeah, I, I kind of want to like yeah. continue on with that thought in mm -hmm. my own thinking. Uh, this is not what we mm -hmm. have done in energy budget, but what I've been thinking of my own self because my friend's been sharing something else about like we've been going in about insects and so like I was like going into about how like ants 
um, certain types of ants that they can't mm -hmm. eat or certain uh, plant. So they like harvest it and they put it by a fungus and then they like cultivate those globs of energy fungus and they store it and then they like, you know, exchange mm -hmm. it. And then I was think he was mm -hmm. my, my friend was talking about bees and like well he mostly was talking about like attraction to like pollen and then, then going towards there. But so when we're talking about like these points and I think this is what we're trying to do when we branch out the the threads, we're trying to see okay here let's see what what attraction we have here, what energy of 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 like us coming back to this like thread and pulling on it and, right. free, and pulling on it a more and then what we get from there, I think what we already have huh. of energy and value is stuff that we already have shared and then like for us I think collectively to start to like identify where like the the most clarity needs to be maybe like the, the uh, some more stuff on um, what we already kind of shared recently in, in the thread but mm -hmm. and keep on um, like I think what already is forming is the dynamic energy group and then like it's like a mm -hmm. uh, this symbiotic relationship between the creative energy group <laughs> or basically the same mm -hmm, thing mm -hmm. yeah but, totally yeah. that that, yeah. that that merged quite fast right yeah or, yeah. or not merged but that had a lot of contact points <laughs> yeah if you will and i, I uh -huh. think i think uh -huh. those contact points are are interesting um interesting uh, yeah and I, I think even recently with the contact point between steph and um uh, streamer d and the music <laughs> i think it's another yeah funny, funny yeah, yeah yeah so any any more ad um. letty or or nick because i want to synthesize something <laughs> i synthesize in the form of a flow diagram um okay i can share like, if you want, yes. So, like, um, from the feedback that we gathered in onboarding, or like, yeah, feedback that we gathered, and also just like all the talks happening in the chats, I did like a crazy eight session, and then from there, it emerged this idea for like a unified uh, flow. So, mm -hmm. um, there's an onboarding flow for onboarding. It, no, not just for onboarding, for like just participating okay. in Omega. So like um, it, it asks you like, how much energy do you have today? Do you think directing energy towards Omega will flow energy back to you or energize you? And then it shows like options. For example, if you want to share knowledge, um, then perhaps consider sharing um, knowledge via a library curation. And then you maybe you can see if it's helped, your curation has helped anyone um, and you can feel the value of the knowledge that you're sharing. Um, and also there's, uh, if you want to learn, if you want, if what energizes you is learning, then you can, you can learn by embodying. So like if you're already working on a project, it, it asks you questions to self-reflect. It asks you about like, you know, where, where do you want to focus on? What mm -hmm. activity do you want to do based on that initiative you want to focus on? What can you learn? How can you, how can you learn from the wisdom shared mm -hmm. in the library and in Omega and then like how can you make visible the energy that you're flowing towards Omega and mm -hmm. yeah I I don't want to take up too much time no, but no, it's available no, no, in the onboarding um, file so, okay okay cool but maybe please keep it up and uh, just now I um, want to include it in the synthesis uh, Letty, you have also participated uh, and also have have a thing for dynamic energy budget. Do you want to share anything or or riff off? Yeah, no, I couldn't. I mute myself. Uh, okay. Yeah, it was interesting in all the uh, depths uh, jam sessions. But what I gathered from the very beginning was this: like we approached mm -hmm. this energy budget because it was like an epistemology question we really like to implement in our value flows right because we wanted to implement these different aspects of, of theories and we saw that that this one it was nature based and it was based on mm -hmm. this mycelium things in right. the plankton and nature so we were having this 
to our natural energy value flows as human beings, right? Because we think mm -hmm. if we can measure mm -hmm. different points of information, we will be a better place to to be able to this encourage ourselves to, to think these invisible value flows that are not visible to the eye. And what I feel, and this is like a feeling, not a thinking, nor a synthesizing, not like any abstract thing, is like, yes, we are mixing up like lots of concepts. Like in one mm -hmm. morning, we can just interview people and we can have them really answer anything we would like them to answer. So all these questions, I just remember like the first survey question we did in Omega, and we were mm -hmm. the scientists like placing the questions. So if we provide like, a, a pertinent question, this, this person, this memory is going to answer right with our perspective. So if right. Omega in the yeah. manifesto is like, we are trying to create new values, new, new things, new, new ways of being, it is true that the person which is applying one project is going to put their perspective in the realm. So this is consilience, right? We are consiliencing mm. between our worldviews. Mm. How do we approach work? Mm -hmm. So in, in, con right. in a consilience library, it's super normal that this is happening because we are consiliencing our own, our own knowledge. I feel like oh, oh, or even in like Omega, like I'm, I'm totally with you. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we are consiliencing <laughs> our own Omega and that's normal to happen. So these creative conflicts, even like the playgrounds, they are the places to, to be able to do this kind of work, right? Because it's, it's normal, mm. it's human that this happens. Mm. So I see mm. like onboarding cannot be like the overarching strategy to decide like what is the main focus or what is the philosophy of Omega. It's like, yes, info, yeah. data points, and like a, a general overview of how can we can do this kind of things. Yeah. That's it, like, lens <laughs> around everything, technology, epistemology, cosmology, and we are here to do this kind of work. Okay. Exactly, like that's that's the meta level. Ultimately, that should somehow become something like second nature. But also, and that's why with Durga asked this question about like maybe people really need more, more access to that if they had have no access to philosophy at all, uh, if they are new to self reflection, which I don't know, no one, I don't like. I, I have maybe started, uh, I don't know, five, seven years ago, like really, really late. And then maybe you were all self-reflectors and so on. So then, then please share your methods and so on. But we should definitely have, have a welcome area for like, this starts with, with the, or this is an invitation to, to know thyself kind of right and and this is the space to as a token engineer hopefully come with really hard questions and so on but then but then we are also in this like oh we need to contribute to uh token engineering comments and to be honest like i think in, in my heart and mind this space where token engineers can can come to and get support in making cell sense of complex issues making sense of issues that gives them really like that they know i am in an ethical dilemma like if we can get to that place i want omega to be that place that's like priceless contribution to token engineering commons right but now we're yes, basically but that's like what Drukada said, constructing new approaches to theory Yes, because that's mm -hmm. a continuous mm -hmm. approach, and if we yeah. go to the creative route, it's going to be something different, because that yeah. space is not created by the mind. But, but yeah, yeah, so, and, and the, the thing is, but I also understand, like, uh, token, not just token engineers, but token participants also need the space, like this one ethical principles we have enable informed participation etc and that's why we also started with the idea of token engineering consilience library that this resource that helps people at all to to understand what is token engineering crypto economics about or have the space and that has evolved so i think both yeah right now or, or right now i i am committed as well like to say yeah we should really have both um 
But then also seeing like because there is this funded project Token and Dream Conceals Library now, I'm sacrificing what is valuable in Omega to me as a token engineer. Like this is the space where I come back to, <laughs> as mentioned uh, many times, depleted to the bones and actually have this really, really energizing and, and mind blowing oftentimes this course sense making and that is that value is as i mentioned like priceless and i believe uh, i then also bring that value back to the token projects that i'm active in quantify that <laughs> but now that we now um constructively let's get back to what is you know on the table, absolutely quantified, uh, to be administered, and so on. Like all of these things that are just, again, to me, additional workload. Yeah, okay. And they are also contributions to a community or to, to public goods. But then I really want our energies, or I'm asking the group also to help focus those energies. Yeah, let's, let's, let's. Uh, do we agree that the Consistence Library is something really useful also for newcomers that when they come into token engineering in any project or within Omega, that we say, look, first start with your learning journey, right? And you can come back with tough questions to Omega. <laughs> uh, do, do we agree on that? Then let's focus on this token engineering Consistence Library. And let's focus on also trying to make the most out of it so that it doesn't just become <clears throat> a place where uh, newcomers learn from uh, over overworked token engineers that have no time. Because that is, again, depleting another resource, right? Token engineers. Like, do we take care uh, of our token engineers? The answer is plain no. <laughs> Okay, so let's focus on that. We have a lot of things to focus, even if we go to the base minimum. So what I want to suggest is the following. This dynamic energy budget inspired by nature is something that all of us or many of us have resonated. And now we have this project uh, which has literal budget to be distributed which has human contributors to it and let's focus on that as a first case for dynamic energy budget okay for example there could be people adding creations and creations and creations then we would end up with the questions of okay are these now valuable curations or people who should get the gist of uh, or get really understand uh, crypto economics the transdisciplinarity and so on are these curations helping and building connections so we can ask those questions but if you don't take care then we could be flooded with with curations or if you don't take care of creating the novelty experience also for the curators we could end up with no curations right so literally there is value just stuck. Uh, so I would love for us to focus on that as a first case study. Right? Sorry, I've and, been trying and to get somebody's attention for some time here. I feel like um, we're talking please around just the thing. But yeah. can, can I just share my screen here? I, I, I just see everything that we're talking about here is able to be contextualized by this right so there's there's eight parts to this right so we've got we've got a curated something whatever that is right whatever we produced right to this point right so there's this tradition here right and then people who want to come in and come across this thing so if they're brand new they're going to tend to be participation portion of this thing so we let them know up front what's going on we set expectations and safety and what's alive and engage 
and all going across here that's the dynamic energy budget it seems to me the dynamic energy budget fits into how can i participate what is my energy to do so all of that fits in this this part across and then of course uh, as we're doing this thing th this thing doesn't go up just like what you were talking about uh seb them you know you come in working hard on curating all day and it's like an ossified uh, proposal and it takes energy from you because that's what happens down the other b back end of this right so if you're then we need to have space for the sense making portion of it and then we process that figure out lessons and then go through an informed consent process where we iterate a thing and that's always going to drain energy from you and but then we end up with better curation and then you know we go through this process again so i i don't know i i keep when every time i'm hearing you guys talk about all of this you know it seems to me that but that uh, this is yes but this is not contextualized this is something you, you synthesized for gravity right no nope. what i'm not just, in not like just for okay let, let's let's step back let's get the essence of that mm -hmm. model and apply it to token and drink conscience library or mm -hmm. even to our working group. I can read you the graphic for that. for that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Like what is the essence and then what is it? How can we see that in yeah. in token and drink conscience library? Yeah. Definitely. I've just I've just realized that I probably need to redo this graphic for this, but I was hoping you guys could see past the word gravity and see. Yeah, you know, I know uh, I can. <laughs> But for that to really ring a bell with people, we need to yeah, I'll do again it. step back, get the essence of that model, ask questions to understand what is in token engineering conscience library, and then map the token engineering conscience library back to the essence. I'm happy to like work, work this with you. I think it's it's yeah. powerful, and I well, and, and I, I think people should like, be able to people ask. Don't, no, no, what, what I think, I don't know if a lot or many or a few see that, but what Durgadas does is constant synthesizing. <laughs> he, he's like the, the collector of mental models, uh, as he says. And actually, you know, learning alongside him is quite enlightening. <laughs> I don't know why people would, would, you know, say, oh, like, oh, this is a model, it says gravity on it, so I don't have to understand it. But it could also be the other way around. People who want to learn about how do I synthesize model could ask Durgadas, hey, explain to me how you did contextualize that in gravity. Explain to me or let, let me understand what is the essence of this model. Let me try my hand at getting the essence of that model that you just showed. And then let me try apply it in Token Engines Conscience Library because I know what the Token Engines Conscience Library is or should be or what the group has talked about. Well, and that's and why that I've been trying to offer a narrative um, yeah. construction and deconstruction uh, thing as a part of Omega. So maybe that's mm. the most relevant thing I can do right now is to offer that as a weekly thing or something or a, a month-long like course where I say, let's look at how to construct narratives and deconstruct narratives. Take anything, a website, I could do it with anything at all. So it doesn't matter, you know, or I could explain the graphics that I've created and this kind mm -hmm. of thing. So, you know, whatever yeah, yeah. works for you, okay, but I'm just down me, for that. Okay, okay. Let, let me just help uh, with a few things I think that will work. Let's take that graphic in, in gravity because I really think it does suit uh, or it's not said. I mean, we should be people in Omega should be open to that mind, that mind games or mind, mind maze. Like that type of uh, understanding, looking through models, like not taking everything as a dogma, right? It's just one model and then seeing where it is useful, then seeing, okay, what is the essence of that model? And then we take that essence of that model that you synthesize for gravity, we take the essence of it and then we apply it to Token Engineering Conscience Library. We could have, yeah. I will, I will suggest that as Nick was, what is it? Is it part of even the learning? Learning about uh, 
models and about the constructing oh, are you on the construction of the token engineering consensus library. Um, are, are you pointing at something in your screen? No, but that's what uh, Durgalas just shared. Oh, okay. So you're you're asking if what Durgalas has shared is part of learning. No, oh, it, it is basically. Yeah, Sorry, it is applicable. I think it is a very good exercise to learn how to deal with models. Um, you know, think about useful models, think about models that are out of context, how to contextualize them, uh, a sense of models and so on. Can we do the construction of the library? Can we add there is something that also where we identified uh, modules that are part of the learning experience already to get people actually interact with both the library, yeah. the content, as well as the construction of it. Uh, well, and I think well, I oh okay sorry. I was just going to say uh, the the consilience is a unifying principle stuff that I had already written for the whatever previous version. Mm -hmm. I have to mm -hmm. regress that. I could I could add you know a section about narrative construction and why does it matter and how to you know. Um, so I, I'm seeing, yeah, I'm going to add that more explicit, but I literally see Dugadas, uh, you know, complexity tolerance uh, <laughs> uh, coach, uh, as well as uh, who has literally self-selected as a good guide for consilience, for synthesizing uh, and so on. I would add him as a guide and help um, create those learning modules, A, where you're literally learning about consilience uh, while you are also working on uh, how to or, or, or working on the construction or understanding of the token engine consilience library. Let's try that. Okay. Good question. It can absolutely be part of the library. Like, I don't know if you mm -hmm. saw about the adventure section. It's basically like where the NFT self-discovery game could live, where Durgadas's courses could exactly. live, or even the boot camp could mm -hmm. live. Mm -hmm. Like anyone can so, mm -hmm. come up with mm -hmm. any learning mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. So basically, let's start with a set of adventures that will help in constructing the library itself. Okay, number one, it will get the contributors, the, the long-time contributors to put their valuable contributions uh, in, in place. It will help us, again, what I meant with focusing energies, like people who are interested in, in learning onboarding. Again, let the new people who are new to token engineering commons and so on and so forth, and new to token engineering, let them onboard at most the token engineering consilience library. That's, that's my take for, for now. Unless they self-select for this complexity ride, <laughs> okay? Totally. And um, then what we have now from the process, uh, again, I will Can make a digest that will be... Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mert, Mert's trying to say something. I think he has to go. Understanding of this call, like I took three uh, action items regarding library. I just want to share and have the feedback. So one is as you, the first thing that you said, the newcomers onboarding process. The second is creating this, deciding the actual features, like maybe kind of a soft freeze feature, feature freeze for the library. And third is to uh, create a better uh, collective creation template, as you said in the last meeting. Mm -hmm. So I actually mm -hmm. I was work, I was taking a look at it on the like weekend, like how can we improve it. So mm -hmm. these are the two action items that come up to my mind. If you guys mm -hmm. okay with it, I would like to try to kind of, you know, I don't like the word managing, but start like uh, more an uh, executor mode. I know. For example, like I okay, was wondering. But take a look at the take a look at the at the process literally it's very clear 
Yeah. Number one is get to creations, right? And then we focus on okay. that. So if mm -hmm. uh, I saw the like actual process, it was awesome to be honest. Like it clarified my mind a lot. Yeah. Uh, just so and and more. number two, like number two, <laughs> sorry, but this uh, this meeting is actually not about the token engine conscience library, yeah, but exactly about the, how do we administer yeah. the project. Uh, of, of delivering it, including the budget, including this whole uh, energy, uh, 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 dynamic energy budget research, where this distribution of funds can be a case study for the research itself. But that, like, my bad, but I was kind of get, like, become outsider of the, this budgetary discussion. But I wanted mm -hmm. to share my initial idea and People yes, who are yes. working hard on it can take some like uh, insights, I believe. So what I was thinking about the consensus library is that so we are trying to create an energetic budget, like an experimenta experimental budgetary mm -hmm. allocation. So what mm -hmm. I think is that we can have minimum base salaries, like kind of people who work in library give a considerable amount of labor in it, have like minimum amount of distribution. Uh, the, the remaining distribution will be decided by the who has mm -hmm. more energy, who has more uh, like uh, sympathy to this project will work more and will get more of this allocation. I know it sounds like maybe this coordinate rounds, but what I think is more ad hoc basis. Mm -hmm. For example, if Nick said, oh, this month I'm, I'm like feeling super reading mode this month so I'm reading a lot so I wanted to contribute to the library more than other initiatives and I want to have like $500 more than Matt because he's not contributing that much so I will say mm. okay because there will be a social consensus around how Nick is participating in the library so it will be visible on the chat and she will like voice her interest so we can try mm. to allocate this fund based on the personal energy energy second and need so mm -hmm. for example i can say oh this month mm -hmm. like i just don't want to take a lot of money maybe it can sit on the nose safe maybe some other month mm -hmm. i can take more so we can create this mm -hmm. kind of uh, ad hoc base energy related mm -hmm. uh, budgetary distribution on top of a mm -hmm. social minimum base what i was thinking mm -hmm. for example like for the 15k we can spread 10k to who like people who have been contributing to the library for a long time, and other 5K, we can just start spreading it as like a quote-unquote mm -hmm. bounty of the energy. Mm -hmm. Like if mm -hmm. you have more mm -hmm. energy, we get bounty. Something like this, yeah. I will envision it actually. Got, got you. So I, I like this uh, base, minimum base for contributors or who have been already contributing and then an experimental area where we uh, see added to the um, dynamic energy budget experiment. So, But here, please keep an eye on the thread dynamic energy budget because at the end, uh, there this whole distribution will come back to you in as the working group lead and administrator and, and uh, yeah okay that's my bad sorry about that so thanks a lot Matt. yeah just one okay. very last mm -hmm. thing is nick share the document and nick share the picture on the administrative work thread i i just got i just you guys want to take a look at would you would you think we should create something like this i think there there was a mixed opinion creating this very structured project management kind of shift but i mean uh, if if there's yeah. a consensus, I can work on it. Like uh, I just want no, to like say we, we are literally those process flows that we are working on. Uh, that that those are the high level, right? And again, like literally, with so many people and so little time contribution, managing that <laughs> and creating these documents will take more time than, than anything we will be creating. Okay, it will take I my agree. time, it like, will take my time. Like, there will be more time. questions about, hey, what is happening here? Referring and it, it literally um, does not, yeah, go ahead. 
Uh, just to say the good news about time is that I have a lot more time. The bad news is that today I just quit my daytime job, so I'm not looking <laughs> forward. But I have much more time now to dedicate to this project. So. Okay. That's, um, I'm sorry that you had to quit. Do you want no, to talk? No, I had to quit. It was, uh, it was, I was hired to make it more cooperative, but it was not the reality. So I had to draw my conclusion. Yeah. And, anyway. <laughs> uh, and you couldn't stand the dissonance, I, I believe. You cannot be a liar in this kind of environment. So yeah, it's better to get into things that are for real. So even if it implies like huge financial risks, I think it's worth uh, to take that risk. You know, it's like being artist. You know, I, super I feel you. I feel. But I hope that it gets you to the next trapeze. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Because anyway, it has an ether cable because the Wi-Fi was not working, so I'm back into like WikiLeaks cabling stuff, and you know, <laughs> old school. So, um, okay, I'm just um, before anyone has to uh, leave. Basically, what I do is the same with the process flow of the working group. Uh, I will try and focus, and also, I don't know, Nick, you're still here as well. Uh, all, all activities, including like onboarding, we should really focus on those questions. It's great that we have collected all questions and so on, but let's focus them all on number one, like pre one consilience library. And uh, uh, as a steward, again, uh, I have a commitment to token engineering ethics. So there will be definitive, definitively the harvesting of everything that we have uncovered and developed with respect to token engineering ethics, the principles, uh, and so on. Again, like there is a lot of that process and process flow to be figured out uh, within working group Omega that I feel like um, we need to come up and again, uh, might we have to do the session once more, but maybe we don't uh, hijack the creative flow mm -hmm. sessions for those, but actually have, have our process and admin a session, literally documenting um, what needs to be done and so on, that everyone knows how to connect their wallets, where, with chain, you know, all that jazz that actually should be explained somewhere uh, higher up in, in token engineering comments, uh, in my view, but we we have to take care that we don't, uh, you know, waste any any uh, of the of the funds that we have, etc. by, by uh, you know, doing not making uh, avoidable mistakes. So that's that. Okay. Take good care. Bye -bye. Thanks so much, everybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bye bye. Thank you. Okay. Bye. And so gnosis safe and all that. Um, okay, then basic dynamic energy budget, we can have this experiment within the token engine continuous library. And of course, DAB focus, not focus group, but DAB group. Uh, you are more than welcome and free to take it. Where, where it wants to lead you, that research, or, or you know, the, the, that thread should be open to questions mm -hmm. and, and creative jam, literally, because that's what research is about. Yeah, the creative flow. One, one more. Um, Can I say for something? Our... For... Yes, Dana? yes, yes, please. No, mm -hmm. because I, I really think that we need to have um, a residency in physical and working, you know, in person sometimes. So I'm still considering this idea of going to Resgos or to some other places, but um, uh, it, I mean, there's a point where it's hard to go through the creative process without being physically in person. So. Yeah, if you want to pass by, there's time in July. Yeah, but that's some additional uh, work. But... <laughs> yeah. Well, I've, I've literally uh, built an entire building for a group like ours. That's so. right. 
<laughs> you should also host some some in 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 uh, Canada. So that that's the other thing, like those locations that exist. If you want to create something there or or visit others, that's totally in. Other than that, we have we have uh, events within tokens during community that could benefit it by uh, you know Omega uh, workshops. But again, like uh, I guess for that we need people who literally are energized by organizing events or hosting uh, those workshops and coordinations and so on. So that's the only uh, hint I'd like to give there. But totally uh, possible or, or totally welcome, let me put it that way. What else? The creative flow. Within the regenerative workflow or, or this process flow, like we need to get stuff done. There are literally what uh, Durgada calls bureaucratic uh, in between <laughs> place, right? Uh, how do you acquire, how do you report on, uh, on, on progress of the working group and so on and so forth? It's very much defined like it would be in, in, in a bureaucratic uh, association or organization, right? So we're going through this and on our onboarding board, uh, uh, we have Fabian who just literally said that like I'm not doing that and he doesn't participate although he like, like he's so much into what we do in Omega. <laughs> he, he was one of those uh, who, who pushed that into being if you will right but he, he just says no <laughs> I cannot like there, there's that yeah uh, so but how can we get creative around those things that need to be done and I'm I think I'm getting back uh, Satori to how you started this session uh, with those seasons <laughs> <laughs> right uh, like how can we make that mm, more healthy I don't know how healthy it is you know to offload uh, everything that you know those uh, things that need to be done are currently entirely offloaded to Mert and Mert is a researcher <laughs> okay, and, and he's active in other token engineering, com uh, token engineering uh, projects, Prime DAO, etc. So he could, for example, be uh, participating and, and contributing in other areas. Uh, a lot of value that token engineering commons or, or us in Omega could be needed, but he's doing it because it needs to be done. <laughs> uh, and yeah, uh, out of responsibility, literally. And yes, of course, there is the working group lead, how do you call it, remuneration as well. But literally, you know, for example, if he wants to propose uh, uh, the, the research proposal, right? It is obvious, like, how, how are you going to handle that, right? Uh, so how can we as a group uh, how can we make use of, of the, this nature flow, creative flow, that number one, things that need to get done, but which are also very clear, like there is no change in those processes, unless Token Engineering Commons goes through an upgrade, they will always be the same. How can that be Actually, that should be automated, to be honest. <laughs> if something repeat is, is repeatable, repeated, uh, it should have automation and to, to free the human. Uh, um, but how can we uh, come up maybe with a working style that A, helps iterate or helps people be in different positions uh, more on the creative side, research side, and then go back to doing administrative work and so on. Maybe that changes from month to month. Like, what is? Do you do you have anything that could be helpful? 
Um, no, but I was just thinking when when he was talking and, and different things that we're talking about, like uh, when Dogadas was talking about the gravity um, um, graphic, like that's like a skill set for someone who wants to be like a curator guide of like mm. the the library. Mm. Um, Mert is like mm. that's like a skill set for a role to to be. Uh, you know, a lead in, in one of these projects. And so, like, filling out like that, um, and then I guess it's like we we, we document that and may, maybe somehow do the buddy system where, where like, the tutorial, but, like, you, you onboard somebody into, like, mm. your role. Like, kind of like these, you know, what you're talking about, like, work work sessions mm -hmm. or, or these, like, tutorials or, or these or these, like, workshops. I think like later that's that that's becomes part of the library where we kind of figure out our own roles of what we do good and what we could bring to the table but then also to stuff that needs to be done to like one time in imaginarium mm -hmm. i just basically said like okay if anybody wants to do a, a show you have to do this you have to like you know sign on to our youtube here's our password for that you have to uh uh have someone uh, ed, you know, know, knows how to audio edit or, you know, send it to me. But, you know, here, mm -hmm. here's a program to learn that. And, like, you know, like, the basic outline to, like, produce your own, like, show uh, in that in sense mm -hmm. is, like, we have all these um, things that need to be done, but also to, then we have, like, these emerging, like, things that we're exploring, but maybe we start with, mm -hmm. with what we need for the library and what are those roles, and then we see about like those are our journeys of uh, of um, mm -hmm. building the library, and and then we keep mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. trying to create these. Um, because I've been thinking about this a lot too. These feedback loops, these good feedback loops of like um, asking yeah. questions of people that are really interested and want to learn it, and then what we can learn from that. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I've been thinking about lately mm -hmm. too. I don't know, you also, I heard you say say something that caught my attention in, in one of those videos that I had a chance to uh, peer into. It was like, uh, I don't know if you remember, <laughs> it was just a random catch, uh, but something like that you only start projects where you know you can do it by yourself. Oh yeah, that's like some, yeah, that's something I tell everybody who who has an idea in Imaginarium. I go like, okay, but uh -huh. if you want that project to happen, just like make sure that you could do everything you need to do to to make that happen. And like, I just mean like the bait. Well, for Imaginarium, that would be like, oh, knowing how to like post on the Imaginarium channel, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. knowing knowing uh, you know who are the people to talk to, how to open up a Jitsi, and and do all those like little things. And, yeah. and and like then then it could happen i mean i remember like giving out like the password to one of our collective channels and someone said oh someone's gonna like hijack the thing and i'm like i'm just still waiting for someone to use it <laughs> i was like i'm just we're not at that level yet uh but but like i think us being the case study and and moving forward because i i i think for some of us too um there's there's two things I've been thinking about, right? And I think this kind of goes into what everybody is here. Um, and I use the analogy of why I really like one of the first kitchens, even though my boss was like the worst human being mm -hmm. I, I ever knew. But everybody on our kitchen crew, like they went there because they wanted to have like their own restaurant one day, you know? <laughs> and like, mm -hmm. that's why they were there. They were there for their own like motivations. And even though like we had like this like foxhole mentality against our, our chef, we learn from each other and and like most of the mostly everything I learned from like cooking was like at that kitchen and it was basically after work when I would like talk to the sous chefs about like you know we're like smoking weed or drinking beer and then like just having conversations about like uh different things of of like just the day-to-day -day grind of cooking in the kitchen but I I what I make mm. so special about that time is like everybody wanted I like had their own dreams of like you know, be having their own kitchen or something like that. So, like, in this sense, I think, like, what's what's kind of magical about some of us gravitating is, like, we have our own, like, dreams, and we see, like, this as, like, a, a, a way to, to, like, develop the skills and those connections so that then later 
what I keep on referring to is that we have like these like pop up DAOs. Even like it could even be for just like one project. <laughs> uh, like just like wh what was it interesting too in cooking for me is like I, I eventually got into uh, doing pop up restaurants and I op opened up a couple of my mm -hmm. friends' restaurants that way and you we would just like a restaurant would would be, would not have service in the nighttime and then we'll take over the restaurant and then we have a menu and then you could kind of get away with like selling alcohol too. Anyways, we we would do that a lot and like for some reason I I found those like so fun even though. <laughs> Even though they were hard, like we, I would like literally cook on top of like, like uh, we would put uh, towels over everything or even saran wrap everything, and I'd be like cooking on top of other people's like uh, tools, <laughs> and, it, and it was just fun, <laughs> and like it was just, we just did everything by ourselves and learned all those kind of like skills to to to, mm. to, to like cook in mm. any environment or whatever. But in that in that same respect is like. I, I think for me, and I mean, I think I haven't heard it from Steph, is like, we eventually want to like, learn to like, write our own like proposals, you know, like, you know, eventually to like, mm -hmm. the exercise of, of learning all, all those details, because you know, I could curate like, you know, like someone else's work, but like, I kind of, I'm in the book of like, I kind of want to do my own research, I kind of like, itching to like, put my own stuff out there. In a sense, <laughs> and I think yeah. that yeah, I, yeah, yeah. yeah, that tension of like, okay, I, I, I even I when I look back of like my own journey in in uh, token uh, engineering the commons, like I went to like the community uh, call, and then I was gonna go to the uh, to the comms, and you know I could I could do a lot of the stuff in the comms or or the Twitter stuff like that's basically what I do for Imaginarium all the time. Anyways, <laughs> but then. Uh, I did. That's not why I came, and that's not why I came to learn. And then when I found my my way into Omega, I was like, oh, I just felt, in that sense, I think you were talking about this, of holding that space of of not work as as usual, and and mm -hmm. being a like that's the uh, for me in the sense this is this is like the Omega point. This is the Access Monday. This, this is what you need for your mm -hmm. own self. But then like each of us in our small ways, holding this space creates that space larger for everybody when we come together. Like that's the attraction yeah. of where we yeah. see these things overlapping is because all of us are trying to hold that space in, in different times. But then when we come together, it's easier to hold that space. It's easier to yeah. see the connections of, you know, my random, you know, saying or something and then it, it connecting. Yeah to what we're doing here or, or you know, Dogen yeah. sharing that graphic and we're like, okay, that's how we kind of curate guide the library uh, because we need the both skills mm -hmm. of like, what is the relevant knowledge, but also to holding that space so someone else can make the connections and then they can go on their own journey. And like, how do we, how do we- Right, yeah. right. Yeah, it's my hope that people who are traveling around this thing will gain competence in all three of the, crucial skills, the ability to curate, mm. the ability to moderate, mm. the ability to exchange generatively. Do you see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. my observation mm -hmm. about what we're doing on the outside of this thing, you know, mm. you need to be familiar with stability and tradition to understand why that's relevant and understand. And then on the other side of it, when things are chaotic, you have to have clear competence at make is doing sense making right and it takes mm -hmm, a certain mm -hmm. amount of and so if if on the on the stability side it's a wisdom thing where you can travel through participation or you can travel through co-creation and still you know um, maintain some sense of self and that you're constantly going through this improvement and and so on that even the the gravity graphic where i talk about Complexity to start, Ostrom's principle, nonviolent communication, rule omega. I feel like we should train people in those yeah. things, right? And I feel like we have to train people in being ethical and how to, whatever situation you find yourself in, how do you find the ethical choices within That's all it. of those those paradoxes and, and yeah. um, Faustian bargains that we're forced to make as a participant in an extractive abusive system? So, so, so that's it. How can we make that part of our workflow, or ca can we use working within Omega be mm -hmm. the self-discovery for everyone at the level that they need? Like, 
yeah. I don't need to learn about token engineering, but I have other <laughs> like, yeah. like uh, more complex issues and so on. Yeah. yeah. Sure, sure. I, I was thinking. I was thinking that each of us, in a sense, also represents uh, a lot of contacts that are behind us. You know, I like, mm -hmm. I, I'm sharing with a lot of people also. Mm -hmm. So that's part of what we can, we can, you know, like provide to the table mm -hmm. and, and uh, also our teams and, and I don't know, mm -hmm. instrumentalists, producers, everybody, you know, that, <laughs> that is the people mm -hmm. that we used to work with right mm -hmm. so yeah that's another part this Our another networks. part of the fractal you know like we connect here yeah. and it goes it goes here also like uh, many many it's huge so yeah it's about to to bring it to the same and share that production in between everybody you know like everybody can uh, add another thing and another layer of of in in that process in, in each uh, production or whatever we are doing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like mm -hmm. our networks and uh, the wealth of those networks, right? We're creating a new network here around, uh, you know, not, necess not, necess yeah, not necessarily everybody have to be mm -hmm. directly connected with these part of the process mm -hmm. right but because it, it will mm. become became very complex to to manage but we can mm. we can share we can be like like uh bridges and and mm -hmm. you know like mm -hmm. <laughs> take that uh uh you know like investment and share it with more people mm -hmm. like this do you know small worlds networks you have these long connections mm -hmm. and those actually make the make make the network traversal exactly. or whatever traverses in that network uh, be extremely efficient because you don't have the hierarchy or not even a tree structure but you have those close connections mm -hmm. a ring close connections mm -hmm. but within that ring you have also the far out uh, links into into various uh and far out networks yeah that kind of resonates yeah I, I like okay I like so like and it's the <laughs> natural it's the natural way to do it i believe right it's like i'm here you know by the moment mm -hmm. i'm here in costa rica so i i have a bunch of contacts and people and uh not only here well in in other places too so mm -hmm. you know we can expand the scope mm -hmm. of the of each project you know like helping helping us and That's sharing right, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hm. so what i that, that that's so working on token engine conscience library we literally are going to re-engineer um how the, the work flows um, really bringing that that what is regeneration like what is a healthy working wor workflow right um, not thinking about people as full-time equivalents but as people who at the point and space are contact points <laughs> <laughs> for uh, m yeah value multiplication but also value inflow and and that value inflow could be we don't know what to do right now or it could be this is exactly what we need right now but and both is good like yeah. uh, and we host all of it right so yeah my, my sne without sneaking, sneaking suspicion of, yeah. about everything is like this both simultaneously of kind of uh discovering the roles and the the type of like skill set to even start to to do the navigation right i, I think it was mm -hmm. within the vacuum was talking about the three points of trajectory and i've been thinking about it about like navigating and and even having three points yeah, of my own that... self to to navigate 
And so I think even too mm-hmm. later when we start talking about like how do we 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 kind of like fun this going forward mm-hmm. it's like those mm-hmm. those critical points of 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 like value right whatever we keep on like circling yeah. around and that we could see later over time where where it starts to branch out you know where it starts to branch mm-hmm. out because mm-hmm. i already see what i what i wanted to bring to the table which is you know some some of robert anton wilson's uh work which uh kind of branches out of what i think you know uh Dogadas is gonna put down on the table and this branching out of what i what i feel i could probably do with the mandala narrative is is to see how you know uh these different models are useful in different like like you know I, i'm viewing it as like this like deck of of like these models and like you know relative to your your, your situation you could use this and be like okay this kind of like fits over there but then like you kind of like move it around <laughs> yeah and that's what we have and, and this and this is relative to where your attention is and then how you're mapping around in 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 this this field mm-hmm. yeah totally. this is liberating structures by the way <laughs> yeah so well yeah. the cool thing about liberating structures that i like that jeremy just said i'll insert is that he said that it ritualizes conflict and I love that mm-hmm. because it actually then means that we could travel around this spiral intentionally and in, in, in some specified way that would help us, you know, reveal something which is, you know, sticking us or, you know, so perhaps mm-hmm. uh, instead of being as freewheeling uh, in these in these things, it's nice in the Imaginarium, of course, but, but I mean, in other ways, we might choose more. Uh, to narrow the the liberating structure we use for like retrospectives, you know, or different types of things to make them maximally effective, and then see how that works. But but the the maybe, thing is, like this maybe. working group Omega should be about self reflection, and there is literally, actually, like <laughs> I don't even be working on on some library, if you will, right? Or, or I don't know, like or come up with a process that will scale and then w- work on that process knowing that it will scale but i don't know it's it has just become another job on my job list mm-hmm. you know and that's that's not well i'm happy to just have anything. office hours where i can answer questions and people can be like hey i'm <laughs> struggling with this you know i do that all the time yeah, in 40 acre you know maybe there's like a if you're thinking about like mechanisms of making this thing somehow less job-like yeah two things i have to say actually now it's the first like if you talk about those liberating structures it kind of came across my research a few days ago when i was looking into monopoly which is actually developed by elizabeth something who was making like Mm. a critique on industrial society and there's mm-hmm. like another game called Coopoly, which is uh, not a commons monopoly. That's like another game, but Coopoly is kind of a game that is developed just about the practice of learning how to work together in a structure. Why I'm saying this is because, like, in I think in 2021, when I was working with uh, Jean and Marlon. Where Jean mm-hmm. presented like for the first time, I think it was in 2021 in May or in April or June. Did like a little presentation and then she talked a lot about like what this deb actually is, like really in the initial conceptualization, like it was coming out of a frustration that like often in arts funding, persons are like pushed to consume their fund. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and that would be a kind of system instead of just saying like, oh, we got money, we have to justify, we need to spend it. Exactly. Find another way of creating value. So that's why I link this cooperly of like, not just like monopsony or monopsony mm-hmm. or monopoly on like, oh, these kind of relationships work and they need to be consumed according to those kind of economic terms to kind of really rethink the structure of okay we have a value it's a common value if it's within this kind of project 
with the persons that are there, like how can this value by itself create another value, which is a, right. a durable value exactly. and not just a consumer good that then everybody gets a piece yeah. of it and yeah. I don't know, like buy some food Fiction. or like, yeah. I don't know, whether like to think about it, what it does, like not just like MCM or MC, you know, this kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. I I, I feel like I was making some notes yesterday. Oh, I can hear you. <clears throat> I can hear you. And yeah, I, I was thinking about education, right? Which is its main, it's a huge project in into the project, right? Like it's totally, it's, yeah. Yeah, so we we have to add all of these, the values and all these ethical, uh, you know, like all this, this value into the project so it can educate people also, right? So it's very obvious that it's yeah. a, a huge the, part. Is in that the, self-referential? <laughs> totally, within the vacuum. That, that's the self-referential design or, or the self-referential explanation of what it is that we're doing if we can capture that then we're fine but if i'm if you're pushed uh and in, into uh what did i do last week what am i going to next week how much is it going to cost and how much am i getting that's the old freaking system that's not generative that's not regenerative and that doesn't scale it literally doesn't scale our systems our capitalist systems are not efficient in solving any problems they're efficient in solving for some part making those the winners and literally extracting all of the energy from others and we have electricity it's such an inefficient but working system and it works so well that you know it runs capitalism runs on it right uh, uh, mining oil and then fossil fuels and what have you is what drives the economy, what drives the economy is what is monetized and then we have all these financial markets atop that's just a mind game for money making. Literally, uh, sure. it's not like, so, so, so this whole, I agree. Um, but, you, you know, sorry, you know, I, 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 have this vision of blockchain as an infinite amount of wealth. <laughs> mm. So yeah, and you're talking about energy, and that's right. We need to, well, eventually something about energy and how we can build better mechanisms to, you know, like have more energy for less cost. Uh, it could mm. be part of the regenerative project, right? Well, well, my day jobs, and that's what I'm grateful for, but my day jobs actually involve working on those projects that, that are, you know, helping those projects get into tokenizations and so on and so forth. So. And as a, let me say, practicing token engineer, I value Omega not for coming up with more work, <laughs> but being a space to come back with jarring questions that I need self sense making on. I need, you know, I those models that Durgida shared, you know, people have trouble looking at and I don't get it give me an explanation of it. They literally saved my life as a token engineer so many times, <laughs> you, you know, uh, and that's, that's, that's what Omega actually should be about in my view. And if, if now people are making it, uh, I'm sorry, I'm obviously unbalanced, <laughs> but now our full focus is on creating this constraints library and if we do, I still want that to be a space <laughs> where actually aspiring token engineers or token engineers can come in and have their really, you know, uh, jigsaw puzzle questions about complex systems and about ethical dilemmas 
actually you know answered and not like oh great this working group omega created a library and made use of 15k which again compared to uh, what token engineers make with uh, DeFi projects, the, the amount of tokens and money thrown at data scientists and so on is ridiculous. The moment we, we uh, people go through token engineering courses, they are scooped up from, from the market, if you will, right? They don't even have time to give back to the community, although many of them want to and so on. So there are just so many ethical questions around that and also many questions that actually do with us uh, and and within the vacuum you had in the omega curation those are the things that working group omega should be about you know not, not creating another app Okay, but then it's very clear, like, it, it's really about the contributions of the participants, the content and the ideas that those persons put into the public space, and how we can actually mediate that knowledge to newcomers, which then can also contribute so that there's a lively discourse, if that would be the yeah. other. Yeah, that doesn't really require an app indeed, or, or <laughs> I don't know what to call it. I mean, I'm to totally fine with the app, but like, it shouldn't be another app. Again, like, you are mm -hmm. the, as, as creators, uh, what I really d don't like is like, oh, let's ideate, right? Let's generate random ideas and let's vote on, <laughs> uh, on those random ideas yeah. and let's pick the idea that has the most dots. Yeah. That's not finding direction. That's not systems thinking, let alone what we, what Omega is about, feeling systems being like, are we heading in the right direction? Individually, as a collective, it's like... <laughs> well, have you seen the habits like, of the stewards working group? I, I participated in that a lot and they just have these mirror boards and like everybody throws their ideas up and everybody votes on the most important two ideas. And then, okay, those yeah. ideas win, and that's what we pay attention to. And we do that yeah, week, after that? week after week after week. Is yeah. that even ethical? What is that? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's a like, hamster no wheel. That, that is no, a no, hamster no, no, wheel, and that's what I'm talking about. We're going, going that way. We're just going to replicate what is the downfall of society on godlike technology. <laughs> <sighs> Not good. Not but ethical. If this is then the, the, the ethical question, if, if like uh, persons putting like popularity contests on very difficult question, if it's reduced yeah. to a kind of populist discourse. Exactly. Totally, we totally. We need to create another discourse out of yeah. this, which doesn't fall back into those kind of Yes. reactionary yeah. thoughts then it requires a different way of yeah indeed yeah. a different way of yeah. work but probably yeah. also different tools i i, mm -hmm. I, I totally think, i think what what we're all trying to do is kind of like it's you know what you're talking about that, that that circle but i think what we're trying to do is is map out the territory <laughs> and then be like okay this this area this is this is what I because I, the library is just like this I I for my own head I I I I change my model of like what the library should be all the time <laughs> but there there's this like map that we need to kind of like have and then like Omega is like this compass and so it's like it's not it's not about like what the information is but like this relationship to that information and then like is that meaningful or useful and then like how do we even like evaluate value <laughs> and what do we even like you know and this is this becomes like this yeah. practice for yourself yeah. but then like when we come into exactly. all this space then we we could see like where where those connections are you know that 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 inner inner space you know that where the blank spots are yeah i think we just see like flashes yeah. of yeah. it and then like that's where we have yeah. to like dig more and not just like this like okay right. whatever seems like right 
So and 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 as Dorgana shared, like that this is this green meme, right? Uh, everybody's opinions count, and and everybody gets to speak. Everybody gets their five minutes, and so on. That is very well intended, okay. But if you don't, if I, as a contributor, don't have not found direction, if I don't know which way, I might just have random ideas. And if I'm in a group with others like myself, we're just going to get random ideas and we're just going to agree on, okay, let's do this. You know what? A machine learning algorithm does that. Yeah. And machines are do doing that, what a machine learning algorithm does, machines are going to be better at us, at that than us. Again, we're going into a direction not utilizing our human potential, let alone our potential as part of nature, <laughs> which the Aztecs might have better, you know, um, connection back in the day without all these technos than we do. So, but we have that connection. We can find that connection back. Like those spaces and, 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 and working that muscle, uh, it is personal. Everyone needs to find their own but also exchanging on these. And we have this group here who is comfortable at least like uh, seeing, okay, this is about non-duality or, or unity or integration. You know, you don't just uh, say, okay, these are the faces or these are the, the, the consciousness levels or what have you, but you also <laughs> integrate them all or the, the different worldviews and so on and so forth, right? So these are the faculties with it all. Uh, that we should be uh, learning, practicing, and exchanging. And at the very least, in our working mode, right? It's not about um, ideating and then random ideas getting randomly selected by majority vote. I believe it's worse than the tyranny of structurelessness <laughs> if those structures that we use give us more of the same that we know doesn't work.